Greetings, flesh creatures. It is I, Megatron. On behalf of TFYLP, I want to congratulate you for listening to the most refined collector podcast on this miserable little planet Earth. Yes. Here you'll find knowledgeable fans discussing every aspect of Transformers and beyond. Now, enjoy the show while I continue my path to complete conquest of all of you miserable biological entities. Predacons! Terrorize! Welcome! To the most underrated show on the internet, it's Cut the Tape. That's right, it's Cut the Tape. Man, it's been crazy. Let me tell you what's going on in my life. First of all, I'm opening up my own art gallery. I I bought a business. Some of you know this. I bought a business. I, I bought a frame and picture shop. We make custom frames, custom mirrors. And I'm opening up an art gallery inside the store. Pop culture art. There's there's some traditional art because that's you know that's the town I live in. A lot of a lot of you know grandmas and conservative people want to have you know it's a nice lighthouse picture that's framed and I can hang it on my beach home. Ha ha ha. Or it's a nice picture of a birch. I don't know. I you know what. I have that stuff, but I also have a lot of pop culture stuff. Today I had a great day at work. I got to frame some Ken Christensen art. You guys know I've said that name before. Um, I've had some amazing stuff come in. Uh, Not all of it will be ready in time for the store opening September 1st, but hopefully TFCon, if we make it, if, if we can get our crap together as as a society so that we can have TFCon. I'm gonna have an awesome display there. I got an email from a buddy of mine who used to do art for Hasbro. He's like, "Hey Rick, I found these VR Trooper. I think some of these are unreleased. I don't know. Do you want these? Do you want to frame these? Do you want to try and sell these?" I'm like, "You know, I got you. I got you. I got. I'm gonna frame it. I got you. Woo!" So, crazy day today at work. I'm going to relax and open some stuff up. I don't know what I'm going to open, but I got some stuff to open. The first thing I'm going to open is a big box. It's a big box from Louis. Um, I think it's a repackaged box. I don't think that's the case box. But my buddy Ray sent me a box. I got it a couple days ago, and I haven't opened it yet. But I know what's inside. He said there's a a birthday present in there. It's either a belated birthday present or an early one. He didn't know, and I can't decide. So I know there's, there's something big, which is the box. The box is big, and I know there's a big box inside the box. But there's something else in the box. I don't know what's in the box. I don't even know how to cut this box open, which is why I'm not even showing you. I'm just trying to cut it so that when I make the reveal, it's exciting for people. Look, see that? That's exciting. It's called cinematography. Unfortunately, there's a box here too. Remember, never cut towards yourself. Always cut away from yourself towards your enemies. That's what I tell my kids. Never cut towards yourself. Always cut towards a friend or someone you don't like. That way you don't get cut. And if you get a friend cut, well, they're your friend, so ideally they shouldn't uh, press charges this time. If they do, you're not friends anymore. That's how that works. That's life. That's the lesson I'm trying to teach my kids. All right, I think we got this open. No, just want this box to open. 
Never cut towards your genitals. Never cut towards someone else's genitals. Even if they're your enemy. Just don't cut towards genitals. All right. Woo! You know, we live in a world of instant gratification where, hey, I can't find this in the store, so I'm going to go online and I'm going to buy it. Sometimes I'm going to pay a little bit more for it online, yeah. But sometimes you have friends, and by being a good person, and by... Oh, you see the mannequin back there that used to be Captain America. Friends hook you up and they say, hey, uh, Rick, I found something. I know you're looking for one. You can have it for cost, plus shipping. This box is much bigger than I imagined. So it's Castle Grayskull. I have not, you know, I, I don't follow the online community so much, and I don't know if this is, you know, made from the original mold. I, I mean, that mold's been, you know, used so many times. Or if it's, you know, an all new tooling based off the original, I, I don't know. All I know is that I love it. The box is gorgeous. It comes with the special edition Temple of Darkness Sorceress. There she is. On the back, you got a bunch of other dudes I can't find. You got Scareglow. Can't find him. You got you got this thing, the Land Shark. I can't find that. I found one once, but it was smashed. So I said, no thank you. Trap Jaw. Can't find that dude. Manny Faces. Didn't even know he came out. Because I can't find him. Orko. Can't find Orko either. Anyway, this is gorgeous. I love it. You shall stay sealed in your plastic dungeon for all time. I assume this is the present. Open me, big boy, Ray. You know, Ray does not disappoint. He is a good person. I love it when he calls me big boy. One day I'm going to meet a woman who's going to nickname me that. Ironically, of course. Or because she's being mean. I have lost 30 pounds, though. All right. I got... Oh, I've always wanted this. Cardboard. Oh, Ray. I love it. Thank you. Thank you so much. This is this is wonderful. Oh, it's got, it's got a plat... Get the F out of here. Well, well, well. You son of a bitch, I'm in. I will say I don't have these. I didn't have these until now. And I gotta say, out of all the European covers, this might be my new favorite. You son of a bitch. So we'll talk a little bit about these. Just a quick history of these. Marvel Comics in the U.S. Originally started by Bob Budiansky. Written by... At one point, Simon Furman took over the line, the comic. He continued the Transformers line in America, but in the UK, their publishing uh, is different. Uh, obviously, you know, the books are obviously different size. Um, here's a, uh, can I show you a book real quick? Hey, here's a standard US comic book. Here's a British one. Very different, very different in size. Uh, dates of publication are different. So 
a lot more stories had to be written for the UK market, Simon Furman took it and he ran with it. And there are so many amazing stories that just have not come out in the US. Uh, for a while, uh, IDW was putting them out and Collected Works. Uh, there's still some issues which have not come out yet. Um, but you know what, Ray got me, he got me hooked on these and he's been selling me all his extras. And thanks to him, I've put together a nice little collection. So, um, is it Fan Fortress? That's his site, right? Fan Fortress? Okay. I'll find out and I'll, I'll plug it next time. We'll do it next time. I'll write it and then we'll do it live. All right. So before we get into our next, so that was a nice little, you know, detour. I had a couple other things here. I, I had, um, uh, sticks and stones here um, from the Jurassic Park Transformers crossover line. I had um, Transformers Prime RC uh, 10 years too late, but here she is. It's cool. I worked on that show. I love it. Say what you will about it. I, I got an, uh, I still haven't opened this, but there's something I, I, I still haven't opened. And I'm, I'm starting to think, man, it's, it's vintage at this point. It's brown box, and I haven't opened brown box. Remember when War for Cybertron trilogy started? A long time ago, right? Well, I'm finally getting around to this. This is one I've been looking forward to ever since, like, Chug came along, Generations, wh whatever you call it, you know, Reveal the Shield, what have you. There are certain repaints that, as a collector, as a fan, when when you start to deep dive, that you want, you know, you want those diaclone colored repaints. You know, I I want that uh, that red and white mirage, uh, miragi, pronounced correctly. I want uh, I want a red tracks. And now we've adopted some of those characters to become official Transformers characters. Road Rage, Loud Pedal, um, Tiger Tracks, Clamp Down. Some of these inspired by characters, even the Black Iron Hide. Uh, you know the zombie Sparkless robot, and uh, we we've adopted some of those. Galaxy Man. First of all, we need to get a good Shockwave. You think about when Chug started, right? Generations. The year was 2005. Some of the people watching this may not even been born. I mean, nobody watches this, but theoretically speaking, depending on what timeline you're in, you may not have been born when Chug started, when Generations started. Think about how long it took us to get a shockwave. All right, let's think about it. Let's go back in time. Shockwave. He used to turn into a blaster, and now it's an upside-down submarine. The first shockwave to come out in a chug-like line... I'd say Chug Generations Adjacent Line. War for Cybertron. Fall for Cybertron. It was Fall for Cybertron. It was that little deluxe shockwave. Right? Yeah. Wow. That was it. How long... I mean... 2005, that was what? Let's say 2010? 2000, um, 2012, maybe? And now we get to this, and you think, alright, well, what about the shockwaves that have come out since then? Let's think about them. You had that evergreen shockwave, which is pretty good, and 
actually sat on my G1 shelf for a very long time, on my G1 um, generation shelf. But until you get to the War for Cybertron trilogy, you really don't have a proper shockwave. A core character, I, I would say, you know, a solid C, tier C character, depending on the story, you can push him up to tier B, like, say, an animated shockwave. He's crossing that into that tier B category, especially towards season three. Shockwave is one of those missed opportunities because of the nature of his alt mode. Now, we got a Galvatron. He was a tank. Okay. We certainly could have gotten a Shockwave that was inspired into something else, just like the, the Fall of Cybertron version we got from the video game. Uh, I'm reminded of TransTech. And TransTech Shockwave was basically the G1 gun mode flipped upside down and made into a car. And I can't confirm this, but I think they might have gotten the idea from the Batman Beyond car that Bruce Wayne drive. The, the regular day-to-day -day car that Bruce Wayne would drive around in was the original animated Batmobile just flipped upside down. Go look, go look, just watch, you'll, you'll see. So, back to this. Available through Hasbro Pulse. This is one of those characters that hasn't really shown up uh, in story, but it has a place in the hearts of, I would say people who are mostly my age, but also people who could be younger but have taken the time to go back and they appreciate the the history of transformers uh galactic man there were so many versions of of g1 shockwave there was radio shack and uh i'm sure there were like other electronic boutique versions of him because it wasn't designed by takara tomi uh it was licensed right so other companies licensed it and he always came out in gray or like silver. But never once was there ever a Haztac, Hasbro Takara version in these colors. So, this has been sitting, waiting for me. Part of the Generation Select line since 2019. It is August 2021. Let's uh, sample the bouquet. The new toy smell is definitely worn off. It's, I think this one's gone stale. So first impressions. When compared next to the purple version of this figure they're going to be drastically different but when you look at it by itself it's hard to make an argument for it it is very dark it is much darker than i anticipated then again so i'm used to the more silvery version of it I think I had Galaxy Man, and I was used to the more silver -y version. There was the dark gray version, which this is based off of, and there's a good chance that this pretty much matches that color. But just by itself, it's not striking. It would. This is one of those figures that I think you have to have side by side with the original to get the wow factor of it. Unless I just completely overhyped it in my mind.
And sometimes we can do that. Sometimes we can set our expectations really high and say, oh my God, Spider-Man No Way Home is going to be the greatest fill ball of all time. It could be. But we don't have a trailer yet. But then again, a trailer is just a commercial. It's not the actual film. If we're, you know, if films were as good as the trailers, then Phantom Menace would have been great. Put the shoebox down. We have our instruction booklet. It's a fold out. There's no uh, remolded parts on this. It's just Galactic Man Shockwave. So it's still Shockwave. It's the Galactic Man Shockwave. Um, that, I mean, rather than calling him Galactic Man, it's it's funny to me that it's called Galactic Man Shockwave. I, I would have been happy with just Galactic Shockwave. But Galactic Man Shockwave just kind of like, it's hitting you in the head with it. <laughs> I just, I, I'm, not, I'm not saying it's bad. I was just... I'm enjoying it. I'm, I'm enjoying this now. <clears throat> so one thing that it's nice to see, nice little details like this. You see this? How long were these rubber tubes missing from Transformers? Right? How long has it been since the line gave us something like this? It might have even been G1. But this kind of stuff, remember like every other G.I. Joe figure in the 80s had something like this, like a hose that connected to their backpack? He's got a hose, it connects to the backpack. Now what I'm not crazy about is all the extra uh, tchotchke he's got on him. I like to take all that stuff off. Make a nice little stand out of it. So he can stand on it. Because, uh, there we go. He's not very tall. There we go. That's what daddy wants. That's what daddy needs. Big daddy likes. Big boy Rick likey. So, he's got the appropriate back kibble. I mean, this is just... When Generations first started, they were reinterpretations of who the character was. As Generations evolved, it became, how close can we get it to what it actually was? You done good. You done good. Now... I'm not complaining about this figure. I'm just saying in an alternate universe in the darkest timeline he'd be this tall. He'd be bigger. But it's fine. It's absolutely fine. I'm so glad he's not a deluxe figure. And you know, he's got all this extra tchotchke that all combines together to become like a hover sled. And it's fine. It's absolutely fine. Here we got Jay's and if we stand J's, you can see that's the, that's the appropriate height difference between them. Absolutely appropriate height difference. Oh, I just noticed this. Look at that little detail. Galactic man. I'm happy. I'm happy with this. I'm super happy with this. All right, now we got all this tchotchke here. I'm just going to combine it to you. Uh, and that's the hover slide. Yep. No time to show it to you. But I thought we'd end with something. Transformers Prime. Uh, I was there for the... All through the life of Transformers Prime. All the way from day one conception saying, Hey, uh... We bought a network, and we're going to make a Transformers show, and anime is going away. And 
that was the day we started working on Transformers Prime. So it has a very special place in my heart. It is a unique series. Very different than a lot of the other series. I will say it excels in the animation, acting, first class acting. Miss um, Marky Post, I got to meet her. She uh, passed away recently, so our condolences to her family and friends. <clears throat> so this is technically Dark Energon. <clears throat> um, had a big conversation about the color of Energon. Producers, animators, they're like, no, Energon's going to be blue. Boys don't play with pink. And I was trying to make the argument, Energon is pink. It has always been pink. We like pink. It's pink in all our media. No, boys don't like pink. We're going to make it blue. And it was a fight I wanted to go and fight. And someone who I respect very much said, is that the fight that we need to fight right now? Is there something else we got to fight for? And he was right. And for that universe and that the multiverse of Transformers in that universe. Blue Energon is fine. Purple, pinkish Energon is dark Energon. And for that universe, it's fine. However, if we ever did a Transformers in the Multiverse of Madness, you know, there's got to be a scene in Spider-Man where Andrew and Tom... They're like, oh, here's my Spidey capsule. Here's my web capsule. Let's trade. Toby, can we trade? Oh, mine actually comes out of my body. It's gross. Ew. There's got to be a scene like that. So this is our seed. She's like, hey. Hey. Come dance with me, man. Oh. It's almost like they made this from the CAD files. This is great. This is absolutely great. She comes with a ton of interchangeable accessories. Alternate hands. Uh, swords. Which, uh, I don't believe she had the swords in the show. I've worked on the show and I can't even remember. I know the toy had them. And then these are the cannons that she had in the show. She definitely had the cannons. And then there's these little... I have no, I have no idea what the hell those are. Little flash things maybe that oh oh so these little gray things they're supposed to be energon colored lame lame they're supposed to be purple they're just gray put that aside rc i think was one of my favorite characters on the show I had a very specific idea for how to, I wanted to kill her off. She, she was very heartbroken over she, Cliff Jumper. She lost her partner. And I had this idea, and I, I kept going back to like the original theatrical cut of Alien 3. She's on a... It's like a gang plank, a gangway, scaffolding. She's on it. And she kicks it away. And Smokescreen is like, no! And she goes off, and the, the platform's moving away. And then she activates a button to save the day. No more RC. That was how I wanted to send her off. Um, they were very surprised, the producers, that... I was suggesting we kill her off. Um, obviously, it never happened. Uh, I thought her death would actually serve the story. It, 
It always surprised me that we were able to get a toy to transform into the motorcycle from this. And that toy, when, I mean, this is, you know, from the show, you know, you see the little, little tiny wheel there in the back. The fact that we made a toy transform out of this is amazing. There is one moment in Prime that it always makes me laugh, though, when the little motorcycle pulls up behind the kid. Uh, what's his name? Jack? I don't know. And it transforms into the robot, and she just, like, grows, like, four times in size. <laughs> that just, it just always gets me. Just always gets me. You know who I thought would have been great to play RC is Ming Na Wen. Now, the voice acting was top notch. I'm just saying, hey, if there's a, a multiverse and there's another version of this, I just, you know, I look at her and, like, I don't know why, but, like, my daughters are also really big into Milan, so. So, this is uh, Transformers Red RC. It doesn't transform. There's a meme going around right now that says, um, so you would pay $150 for this figure. Yes. You transform it once, you put it on your shelf. Yes. Okay. Would you pay $150 for this figure that's even more detailed, looks even more like the robot? No. Why? It doesn't transform. It's not how IPs are supposed to work. You fall in love with the character. Now, Transformers is, is the one IP that I would say, all right, it's, it's a little skewed, but as a fan, don't be afraid to collect an artistic interpretation of the character and fan base that you love. In this case, it's the Red series, non-transforming, they're great interpretations of the characters. I recommend them. Go get them. You'll enjoy them. They are artistic. It is almost akin to the uh, Bushido-like, ninja-like, samurai-styled Star Wars or Marvel figures. They're different interpretations of those characters. So, with that being said, we have cut the tape... We have gotten surprises. We laughed. We almost cried. We'll try harder next time. And please remember, wear a mask, even if you're vaccinated. I'm vaccinated. Please go get vaccinated. It's science. It's real. Do it for your country. Do it for the people that you love so that other people will get vaccinated so they can protect their loved ones and then they in turn protect your loved ones too love each other be nice to each other and always find time to cut the tape